Deep Rock Galactic's single most underutilized tool might just be the platform gun. Not just in its movement potential, no. Repellent Additive, one of the Black Gun's Tier 3 mods, is so impactful that at some points it was called Engineer's single strongest contribution to the team by top modded players. Now, not all of us play in crazy difficulties with pre-made teams, but even if this isn't the case for you, Repellent is still another potent tool that can help you crush whatever difficulties you'd like. Let's start with the fundamentals. How exactly does Repellent work? It's nothing super deep, actually. All repellent platforms do is increase pathing costs in an area. See this platform? Grents won't walk over it, because to them, the platform is seen as a longer path than just going around. We can extend this concept to chained platforms as well. You can space platforms out a bit. They affect anywhere from slightly more to a lot more than their actual size. However, you eventually start to run into a problem. Ever heard that no more than four repellent plats in a row heuristic? Well, it's kind of true. Sometimes. If you're standing too close to the platforms, and the bug is too close, it might just ignore them, because the pathing cost of going all the way around is higher than just walking through the plots. Now, this doesn't hold true if you or the bug walking at you are further away from the plots, but it can be inconsistent at close ranges. But, what if we want to play at close ranges, or want to have plat setups longer than just four. Well, you can just add another layer. You don't have to be this precise in your normal gameplay, by the way. It's just for the camera. Two layers of repellent means double the length with increased pathing cost. Of course, this applies vertically, too, but you have to be careful. See this? Plats sticking out can lead to funky situations where the player is inside the repellent, which can lead to divergent behavior, such as bugs ignoring repellent. If you stand back far enough, this won't be the case, of course. But. Because of this, it's often a good idea to double up in any layers going vertically, and to not stand too close to repellent of any kind. Thanks to Dottle, who I'll link in the description, for helping me record this segment. So let's recap. Here are the rules of repellent. One. Repellent increases pathing costs for enemies in an area around the platform. More repellent means more of that area. Small specks of repellent have no effect if you're trying to clean up old platforms, so you can safely ignore them. 2. Bugs will ignore repellent if there's too much of it. If the cost to path around the repellent is greater than the cost to walk just straight through it, then bugs will walk straight through it. 3. You can get away with larger repellent setups if you're standing further away from the repellent. 4. Adding more layers of repellent allows for larger repellent setups. On top of that, when possible, coordinate with your driller for best results. Let's cover some edge cases here real quick. Repellent isn't the only thing in the game with increased pathing cost. Lots of minerals, the minehead, and pretty importantly for magma core, hot rock, also have increased pathing cost, along with some other objects in the game. This can mess up your repellent in some cases, especially on magma core. You can mentally think of them as repellent, and they should be played around, though generally they're not too important aside from hot rock. Wandering bugs, that is, bugs that aren't aggroed to any player, 
ignore repellent. In practice, this really just means that repellent, which is too far from the team, simply won't work. Repellent does also work against flying enemies, though this behavior is not super well documented and is generally pretty niche. So with all this information said, how should you actually use repellent? As long as you follow the principles laid out above, you can get creative and really explore the capabilities of it. Here's a couple building pieces to inspire you, and I'll show you a couple common, complete setups in the end. This building block is just a couple plats on the roof in an opening. This is probably the most common use case for repellent, just forcing bugs into clumps on the ground to line them up for kills. You'll see this super commonly in high-level modded lobbies. More or less any time the team is stopping to hold, NG will slap some plats on the roof a bit away from the team in the direction where the bugs are coming from. The next piece can be used pretty much any time you have your back against the wall. Just set a couple layers above you and all of a sudden you've cut off 180 degrees to worry about. And nobody who plays video games looks up, so this one is particularly important. In this case, it's even more important, since the ledge means you wouldn't have line of sight to any of the bugs up there, letting them crawl up on you harder. Notice, however, that the plats are well above me, giving me plenty of space to jump around freely and ensuring they function. While we're at the uplink, it's usually a good idea to throw a couple plats around the drop pod, for two reasons. It's harder to get good AoE value on bugs walking perpendicular to you, and crucially, drillers' weapons can't stick to the pod. Don't surround the whole thing, though, if you can help it, or the bugs might just start ignoring your repellent. Whenever you're on a ledge, with areas you don't have sightlines on, you can plot them off to make bugs walk into more convenient, longer sightlines. This also has the effect of helping to prevent Praetorians from killing you through the ground. In some tunnels, you might want to block off some walls, both to clump up the bugs because the right side of the tunnel is much shorter than the left, and because it takes relatively minimal repellent to force the bugs into the long road. Now let's put all these pieces together. This is an example of a pretty typical tunnel setup. You usually want to force bugs off the ceilings and sides and onto the ground, where it's easier to line them up, which is what these top plats are for. This platform on the bottom right side is to prevent bugs from crawling up into this little nook where the player has no line of sight, making it harder to kill bugs there. This top left plat is there for a similar reason. Altogether, this setup more or less funnels all the bugs into a single line, which makes it incredibly easy for me to get breach cutter value. The plats on the right side also make bugs walk more towards the left, giving me a bit more space to grab the resupply, which is on the right, if I need it. If I had friends with me, this would likewise augment the effectiveness of IFGs, rockets, blow-through weapons, sticky flames, and so on. Now let's take a look at it from my perspective and see how it fares. We start off with a bit of trash cleanup, and each breach shot, because of the repellent, has absolutely huge impact, creating a ton of space for me to die to the singular oppressor in. It's important to note that the bugs here are actually going to tend to be more linear, even before they reach my repellent, since paths on the walls would be less efficient once they do hit the repellent. So hey, not too terrible, right? Aside from the oppressor, the repellent made this hold quite straightforward. I hope you sort of get the idea now, and I'll just flash a couple more repellent setups on the screen from Memtrenzi, who I have to thank for being one of the most prominent historical educators on bug repellent. Without him, and many others in the modded community, lots of this would not be known or possible. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out any of my entry runs on this channel, join my Discord, linked in the description, or hop into one of my streams if you ever get a chance. And hey, if you made it this far, consider leaving a like or a comment. It really does help. Happy mining out there. Rock and stone.